Okay, well tonight in the shop, we're working a little late and my Subaru 360 monster car right here is giving me the fits with the front suspension. I'm going to take a little break while I think about it and um, I need to get something else done here really quick and that is right here on my lift. This is my 1954 Nash Rambler. It's not an American, it's just a Nash Rambler. It is a stripped down version. In other words, it has barely any chrome. It's kind of a businessman special. And what we're doing, and what I really am focusing on, you can see up here on the lift, or what I'm working on here, there's a lot of rust in this lower rocker here beneath the driver's door. In fact, there's a big old hole right there. Look at that. So I've already started, I've cut this all out. You can see it's um, about ready to fall out. I have to actually take it off the lift because this lift arm is in the way of my saw. And speaking of saws, to cut out the metal there, I have a choice of two. I use a skill saw. It's just a Makita with a metal blade. It's pretty heavy duty, powerful saw. Or this is a little slice and dicer. It's for um, more petite type work. It's just a Makita four inch grinder with a real thin metal cutting blade on it. And it just zips right in there and does the job nice. And then what I'm going to do, so I've got two choices of metal here. I went out to the metal store and I got this um, piece of, I think this is 16 gauge. Yeah, this is 16 gauge. It's about four feet long. It's a nice solid piece. And I also went to the Home Depot and I got 22 gauge, which is much, much thicker. It has the uh, kind of the guitar string sound because it's thinner, it's easier to bend. I'm not sure which one I'm going to use. I'd opt for the thicker one, but we'll see. I'm not sure what's really on the car. I have to kind of measure. Oh, it's pretty thin. That's probably only, um, that's probably 22 gauge. Maybe tw maybe a little thicker, it might be 20 gauge. I thought it would be thicker than that, maybe 18, but anywho. So what we're doing is we're cutting out all this metal down here and we're going to fix this rust we're going to make a custom rocker and then uh, we'll fill it like that. I've welded in all the rust holes on the bottom of the door there and this part of the rocker I've gotten shaped pretty well. And that way I can put some final filler coats on there and then sand the car and prime it. We're getting into the summer season and uh, I need 70 degrees for the epoxy primer to cure. So you're looking at my my Nash, it's my no frills Nash. Right now it's kind of the hash Nash because it's all rusty in this one spot here. That's all the rust in the whole car that's left. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. So, all right, we're gonna get back to work and start welding a panel. And I think I'll call that good for the night. So thanks for watching, subscribing and commenting on my videos. So we are a little further along on our rust repair of our rocker on our Nash here. And I found a couple interesting things I want to show you. So I zipped the uh, lower rocker off. That was really, really rusty. And I found a few things, like I say. Um, one thing that's kind of cool is the outer frame box of the Nash has factory holes in it for lightweight construction. It's kind of cool. And if you look here, this hole is double duty. It's a little mouse hotel. That's all my seat padding. Some little mouse is making a little home in there. I might find him later. There's carcass. But I wanted to show you the rust. Look at this. That, my friends, is a lot of rust. Now, I've already done the floorboards in this car. I don't know if you can see the new metal up in there. It basically rusted from the floorboards out. But um, this is all getting replaced with new, fresh metal. And all this rust in here is just going to go away. Wanted to just show that quick little tidbit of information there before we cut a new piece and seal her up. There we go. So there's our new pieces of metal there. And that's the part we have to patch there. So we're going to clip on along here and get this buttoned up so we can get some primer on it and paint it. 
Okay, thanks for watching. Okay, this is part three of our Nash rehash, as I'm calling it. We're working on a rocker. So what we did is got all the mouse debris out of the, uh, the rocker area there, and I used a wire brush, a power wire brush on a Makita, and ground all the uh, rust off there and used some uh, external, what's it called? External or extend? It's a Napa based rust product. Brush on there, it turns all black. Let's see if I can kill that rust. It's supposed to kill it and seal it. So I'm hoping it does that. It looks pretty good. On the ground here, you'll see this is our old rocker. Pretty much Swiss cheese. The thing is just rotten. rotten. Both sides just rotten. I'm sure everybody's seen a lot of rust before. And then here, I have fabricated my new rocker. It's in two pieces. Goes up here. This goes up here. Like this. Fits in here just perfect. It doesn't have the round contour yet. I think I can work on that once I get it tacked. Um, it's 22 gauge. It's pretty thin. It's easy to bend. So what I did is I created that break there. I used my vise and just made a, um, a simple break there to attach the flat to the bottom here to the bottom of the frame and so it fits up on the rocker there. It fits pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. I gotta line it up of course, cut it, trim it a little bit, but that's gonna be nice. It'll be a nice solid piece of steel. So that's probably gonna conclude our video for tonight unless I get really really energetic and start tack welding, which I might do. But that's what we got going on for now. No rust in this Rambler Nash, no frills Nash, at least here. So, all right, keep in touch. Okay, I know I said the last segment video was gonna be the last, but I just had to finish this up. It's actually the morning after, last night I was tired. and One of my knees was hurting from bending over. Working on a car on jacks, which I'm so spoiled. I'm usually working on the lift, but I needed clearance to get at this rocker that I've been working on. And you can see I've got it all tack welded on there. It's not beautiful, it's just tacked into place like that. It's kind of flat. I'm trying to contour it. So, in other words, it's rounded, and I've got to do some more work to do that. I've got the edges pretty good, but the center is pretty flat. And I haven't fixed the bottom yet. The bottom's not attached to the car. But as you can see, it's looking pretty good. I actually overlapped it a few inches here in the center. And what I did is when I cut this, I left a little lip so that I could slip the new metal behind and give me something to weld to. It gives me a good reference. So there is our new rocker. I'm gonna be done for, for now. Um, I just gotta work on some customer cars. So this car's got to go, and overnight, being on jacks on one side of the car, if you look over there, I got a little surprise. See that oil? My axle oil seals are leaking, and I left a puddle of axle oil underneath my wheel. That really irks me, but what are you going to do? It's a 60-year-old car. Yeah, exactly. It's 60 years old. It's 54. It's 2014. Jeez. I guess I can't expect too much. So, looks like some axle oil seals are in uh, queue as well. But I want to get this rocker done and let everybody see how easy this is. Uh, it helps if you have the tools, obviously, a welder, some grinders, some face protection, patience, and just take your time and you can do this type of thing on your own. All right, I hope I help somebody out with some tips and tricks on Rusty Rambler, old Nash. A rehash Nash, which is my no frills Nash. I'm going to check out for now. Thank you for watching, subscribing, and commenting. Please let me know your thoughts.